was good. Craig Lee, Hawkeyes are number one. The Iowa Hawkeye football team is ranked number one in one of the latest college polls. I've got it right here. The AP poll is out. Yes, indeed, it's true. The Hawkeyes, the number one team in the land. Number one for the first time in 25 years. The Hawks have soared to the top on the strong arm of Heisman candidate Chuck Long, who has returned for a fifth year and is Iowa's all-time leading passer. On the ground, the workhorse is All-America Ronnie Harmon. Back from a broken leg, Harmon is a slashing runner with a keen eye for the end zone. But it's not just the offense that has head coach Hayden Fry stoked up. For the Hawkeyes possess a dominating defense that is both opportunistic and hard-hitting. Yes, good news for the folks in Iowa. The bad news is over for a while because right now the Hawkeyes are number one. meets Michigan State, and head coach George Perlis Spartans have played Iowa tough. A year ago, it came down to this play for a two-point conversion. Iowa will go for broke. Boy, I like this. This is gut on the part of Hayden Fry. No doubt about it. Here's Chuck Long. Going to keep him. Going to go into the end zone for two points. No, he didn't make it. He did not make it. Michigan State won 17 to 16, knocking Iowa out of the Rose Bowl. Today they'll meet again, and revenge will be on the minds of the Hawkeyes. It's homecoming live from Iowa City. CBS Sports presents College Football. Live from Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, Iowa, it's the Michigan State Spartans versus the Iowa Hawkeyes. Today's game is sponsored by Chevrolet. It's 1986 at your Chevy dealers now. Live today's Chevrolet. GMAC, the financing people from General Motors. And by Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. It was a county fair atmosphere here in Iowa City earlier this morning. The fans started arriving at 8 o'clock because it's never too early to celebrate when your favorite football team is ranked number one. And here comes the visitors, Michigan State. Their head coach, George Perlis. And now, the number one ranked football team in the land with coach Hayden Fry leading along with quarterback Chuck Long. It is the Hawkeyes of Iowa. Welcome, I'm Brian Musburger, along with Eric Parsegan. The Hawkeyes, number one. Era, you're no stranger to that. Fifteen times you brought Northwestern and Notre Dame into games. You were ranked number one. What problems does that pose for Hayden Fry? Well, I think it's a tremendous honor for Hayden Fry, the team, the coaches, and everybody connected with Iowa. But also, it carries quite a burden for them because every team that they play the rest of the year is going to make Iowa a target. They're going to try to make their reputation by beating Iowa. But I think Hayden Fry has it in the proper perspective. He knows the most important poll is going to come at the end of the year. Great players on this Iowa team. You've seen Chuck Long and Ronnie Harmon, linebacker Larry Station. How about the Michigan State personnel? Well, Michigan State's going to have to come into this ball game without their starting quarterback, Dave Urema, for the third straight week. Bobby McAllister will start. He started the last two games. Hasn't been too productive. He's only had two touchdowns in those two ball games. But the coaching staff is really high on him. They think he's an outstanding prospect practice as well and they hope this afternoon that he'll blossom and give the Hawkeyes a real battle. Era looks like a mismatch on paper. It really does when you look at it uh, but one of the interesting comments that George Perlis made was that he's got to avoid losing this game. Sounds kind of negative but really what the situation is this. He cannot afford any high risk plays in his own territory. No fumbles, no interceptions, no penalties of major consequence, a strong kicking game. He'd like very much to possession the football himself if he can to keep the ball away from a very strong Iowa offense. He did it a year ago. Can he do it this year? Let's take a look at it. All right. We're about to find out. The 
Morning kickoff coming up. The number one ranked Hawkeyes of Iowa will take on the Spartans of Michigan State. As usual, a sellout crowd here in Kinnick Stadium. Weather is going to be a factor because of the wind. Measured at 20 miles an hour, it has been gusting up to 25 here this afternoon. Era Michigan State won the flip and elected to defer, and you don't agree with that choice. I think I would have played to my strong suit, which is Michigan State's defense. I think I would rather give the ball to the Hawkeyes, let them work into the wind in the first quarter, and play for those breaks. They're going to their short suit. Their offense is not exactly productive as we talked earlier. Well, Rob Houtland is teeing up the ball for the Hawkeyes. They will have that gusting wind at their back. And we are underway. Johnson, six yards deep, is coming out behind a wedge. Back down near the 16-yard line. Now let's take a look at the Michigan State attack. Bobby McAllister, six foot three inch freshman, is the quarterback, and his fullback, whose father once was the captain at Notre Dame. And one of the best tailbacks in the country is Lorenzo White. Mark Ingram, they're going to try to throw to him today. Andre Risen is the other wide out, and Butch Roll out of Florida is the tight end. Here is first down for Michigan State. McAllister rolls to the right and completes a pass on first down to the tight end roll. Beautiful bootleg play, a good choice by George Perlis of the Spartans, and a good psychological move from McAllister because he has not had two great games in the games that he started against Notre Dame as well as Western Michigan last week. Era, are you surprised that they roll out right away, get a 19-yard gain, and put it up against the wind on first down? Looks like it was pretty well planned and scouted, doesn't it? White is set behind, takes the handoff, and the Hawkeyes were ready that time. Let's take a look at the Michigan State offensive line. He's 6'6", 269. Next to him, Rodgers will go 6'3", 247. The center is 6'2", 238. Wojciechowski, perhaps their best lineman, 6'4", 246, and 6'4", 255. A big, experienced offensive line. Lorenzo White has carried this team, and he'll try again here. Short of the first down, met by George Davis, number 37, who drilled him and drove him out of bounds. An end zone shot here. You'll see Lorenzo White, tremendous runner. I think he's an outstanding halfback. Cuts to the outside here. Does a good job of getting some yardage there. He's been a 100-yard getter now five straight weeks in a row. Third and four. McAllister rolls the other way. He's two for two and another first down. He hit Reno Belk on a double tight end formation, and Devon Mitchell made the stop for the Hawkeyes. Is that bootleg pass again that they ran on the first play? You'll see he comes the other way with it. They're in double wing, two tight ends. He fakes the pitch to Lorenzo. The linebackers go with him, and he hits Belk right across the middle. Two beautiful passes by McAllister, and maybe he will blossom in this game as they had hoped. A lot of formation distortion here to stretch the defense, as you see. Inside Iowa's 45-yard line. Oh. White smacked down at the line of scrimmage. Davis again, number 37. Boy, George Davis, number 37, really does it. Watch here. George Davis, the linebacker on the weak side, comes flying in right there, and he hits Lorenzo before he gets any kind of head of steam. Second and ten, and we'll see if McAllister elects to roll out again here. Craig Johnson has checked in. He's on a wing for Michigan State. He's coming around, and Iowa is ready. John Breeze, number 57, penetrated and brought him down for the loss. Now you wonder why Iowa is number one in the nation against the rush. They've only given 17.7 yards per game. There's a pretty good example of why. This era will be third and 14. Be a tough call. Now 
Foster under center checks the defense station steps up in McAllister roll right complete and it's close to a first down as he hit Ingram and there is a penalty flag down penalty on the play I am very impressed with how accurately McAllister is throwing the ball well you know we were saying at the top of the show that let's hear what he has to say here well start five yards well that's a tough penalty for him we we're saying that McAllister has looked good in practice does all the things that they want but he was inexperienced as George Perlis said he hasn't had the kind of uh, seasoning that he would like and certainly this drive has been an impressive one They'll have be hard pressed to make up the yardage here. Era, they have been plagued by penalties in their first three games this year. And a team that does not have an explosive offense must cut down the penalty mistakes. Very good point. This is what George Perlis wanted to do, but here's one that's very costly. Took away a first down. It is third and 19 for the Spartans. Ingram has it complete, but it is far short of the first down. Ken Sims, number nine, was the defensive back on the coverage for Hayden Fry. It's well, an 11-yard gain, and George Montgomery will have to punt now. Can't say enough about McAllister here. He's off to a roaring start. It bodes well for Michigan State in this football game because they can be a threat now. They've had no passing attack to speak of. They were last in the conference by at least 100 yards. And uh, that is really a tremendous start for McAllister, I think. Here is Greg Montgomery, and he possesses an extremely strong leg, one of the better punters in the nation. <laughs> Billy Happer lets the ball bounce. It takes an Iowa bounce and is down there at the 21-yard line. So Chuck Long will come to work and his backfield is extremely explosive. Long has suddenly propelled himself into the Heisman Trophy race. His fullback is primarily a blocker. His tailback is the game breaker. And he has two control wide receivers who will fool you. They do not have blazing speed, but they catch everything that Long puts up. And Mike Flagg has replaced Jonathan Hayes, who went to the Kansas City Chiefs. We got a nice balance there. Here is Harmon looking for daylight at Shane Bulla and the rest of that Hawkeye offense that will try to open the holes Croston is 6'5 275 he's 6'3 255 the center is the main man 6'2 255 he calls the blocking assignments 6'3 265 a converted tight end and hate 6'4 275 who will have his hands full today taking on Kelly Quinn the left defensive end 93 should be one of the best interior matchups of the day. Harmon and there are penalty flags all over. Seem to be some movement. Move. Look like the tight end Mike Flagg number 86 moved just before the snap. Let's see what he says. Yeah. There you see the stand-up tight end, which Iowa does. You see him make the move there, and he wasn't set a full second. That was the call. Hayden Fry, of course, used the first stand-up tight end when he was coaching at North Texas State. Daryl Terrell was the wide receiver's name who was pressed in. And because he was so familiar with standing up as a wide receiver, they used it that day as a tight end in a game and it was very good in reading defenses so ever since then coach Fry has used a stand up tight end now it is third and six and the veteran law sets his play short drop quick pass to Smith on the sideline. Looks like he got the first down there, too, just about right. Here's an end zone shot. Take another look at it. Just a quick out by Long. He just drops straight back, reads the coverage, and delivers. And it looks like he both like Oh, good job there by Smith. Excellent job. Now, here is the contest inside. 93 is Kelly Quinn, one of the better rushmen in the country. 
And Haydu had his hands full with him here last year, doing a good job. Notice how far apart he keeps his legs and his balance to keep that rush man from getting outside and around it. Here's first and ten. Calling his plays at the line. Short drop complete again. That one is to Halverson. And Keith Fisher was the cornerback. Definitely an audible by Long. We watched him on Thursday. He found the defensive cornerback back off. That was Sims, uh, or Cram, Crum rather, back off number 35, and he just picked it right there, just a quick out. Second and two, and the play is sent in from the Iowa sideline. Wide receivers generally are the messengers. This time they take Ronnie Harmon out, go to one running back, and it's the fullback. He stays in to protect. Long goes deep for the home run. It's Smith. He's got it at the 15. Touchdown, Iowa. Sequence. They threw underneath Fisher twice. Then they spent the speed men out after it. And Robert Smith, fake short, broke long. And it was touchdown Hawkeyes. And here, the top ranked team in the country has opened up a quick lead on Michigan State. Rob Houghton set to tee it up. And Era, right off the bat, you were so correct about the win. Chuck Long had it at his back. And he went for the home run and connected against the Spartans who had the choice. They could have taken the win here early. Well, he really took advantage of it. And he's got a lot of quarter left here. Ten minutes with the wind in his back. Johnson. The 10. The 15. Out to the 24-yard line before the Hawkeyes bring him down. Next week. A reminder that we will have these Spartans of Michigan State again at home when they take on the Michigan Wolverines. That's one of the tougher grudge matches in the country. George Perlis, of course, who is recruiting against Bo Schimbeckler in the state of Michigan, knows how important it is to beat the Wolverines when he goes head to head against them. And it took long five plays to cover that distance. Now it is McAllister who threw very well but was hurt badly by a penalty on his first drive. Lorenzo White squeezes out a couple of yards before Hap Peterson. Along with Jeff, Jeff Frost. Frost. Yeah, Jeff was in there too. He's a big guy. 6'5", 286. Let's meet that Iowa defense. Doug Burrell there at one end. And there's Jeff. He was forced to play the nose last year because Peterson was injured. Then Breeze, who has already penetrated once here this afternoon, and Joe Matu drops off in pass coverage on many of the defenses used by the Hawkeyes. McAllister on the roll, eludes Peterson. Throws complete to Risen. First down. And the young man who came in with bad passing statistics has been impressive throwing. He really has. I've been impressed. You'll see Peterson, number 50, almost gets to McAllister right there. But he keeps his poise, turns and throws back inside there to early. And he makes a nice catch and gets a first down on it. Nice job here thus far. So Andre Risen caught that pass thrown by McAllister and has a first down. Out at the 39-yard line. George Perlis with a slot left. And 
here comes White. And he gets out to the 45-yard line. Drost again dropping back. Larry Station, their honor student, is at one linebacker spot. George Davis, who was impressive here on that first sequence. Ken Sims back in the secondary along with Nate Creer out of Tilden High in Brooklyn. Jay Norvello had a big week against Iowa State. And another young man out of Tilden High School in Brooklyn, Devon Mitchell. Second and four. Motion. White breaks a tackle, spinning free. Gets the first down, cuts back. What a beautiful run. Is he something? I'll tell you, Lorenzo White is a great running back. 14 yards on that play, and he did it all on his own. Should have been stopped at the line of scrimmage. I'm really impressed. Watch him make people miss. He get right there, number 57 is right on top of him to make the play. That's John Breeze. He's just a tremendous runner. First and 10 for the Spartans. They're down to the Hawkeyes 41 yard line. They trail early, 7 0. Morris in motion. White. And again, it is the talented running back out of the state of Florida who makes that play work for a few yards. That's from last night. And the Cardinals closing to within one of the Easter Division Championship. And again, Kansas City now with a three-game lead in the loss column on the Angels. And the Yankees with an amazing comeback staying alive, but they trailed Toronto this afternoon. Second and six. McAllister on the roll, complete again. That bootleg pass, Iowa's having a difficulty in covering. They've had receivers open all the time. There's Roll that caught it again. Didn't quite get quite as much yardage, yardage as they had in the previous bootlegs. And again, Norvell, number 45. <laughs> McAllister is five for five in this ball game with 58 yards. He's almost up, almost up to his game average, per game average, the last two games. Third and three for the Spartans. Here's White. First down. And Norvell came up and just went headhunting on that play. Oh, number 45 looks impressive in that secondary. Aiden Fry was talking about Norvell. He's been a pleasant surprise. Number 45 right in the middle of the screen. Watch him come up. Lorenzo's turning to the inside. Does a good job. There was a good block out in front. Watch Norvell really hit White. Oh, that's Big Ten football. And the reason why it was open is John Wojciechowski, number 73. He got out there and blew that hole open for White. First and 10. Motion again, and it's White. Penalty marker is down. White got to the 25-yard line, but there is a flag. Goes against the Spartans again. Illegal motion. They're going to take him back five yards. How about Pittsburgh? Joe Morrison's club, not as good as we expected. Rutgers trying to beat Boston College this afternoon. And Army rolling. So that's two penalties against Michigan State already in the first quarter here this afternoon coach yeah they've been costly in both instances where they've made positive yardage George Perlis there I'm sure he's concerned about it but he's got to be pleased with the way the offense is moving the ball particularly McAllister's throwing and he's out here doing a good job a red shirt freshman quarterback forced to play because of Dave Urema's thumb injury Yurima is expected back for the Spartans next week against Michigan. Here's White. And the Hawks were ready. Looked Richard like Pryor was over there. Pryor and Gross both were over there. Good reaction on the part of the left side of the line. It'll be second and 15. 
see those stats, five for five for 58 for McAllister. He's averaging 64 yards a game. Wisen comes to the slot left. McAllister off the roll, being pursued. He'll put it away and step out of bounds. Devon Mitchell was the defensive back. He sealed off when he realized that McAllister had committed himself to the run. Excellent pursuit by the Hawkeyes that time. McAllister was trying to get leverage at the corner, couldn't find an open receiver. But from up here, the vantage point, tremendous pursuit. Great defense by Iowa. The play coming in from the sideline as Perlis sends in two running backs. He takes White out. Morris and Johnson. Johnson goes to a wing. Morris, the lone setback. Morris is going to throw the halfback pass. It's left handed. Johnson is out of bounds. He had him open. He just threw the ball out of bounds. I don't think they can go for a field goal here. It looks to me like he's just out. Here's another look at it. Pitches the ball out to Lorenzo, and Johnson goes up the sideline. He's always hit just as he throws the ball. George Davis came in there, and I think that might have thrown that pass off. I think he's got a pooch kick it here. I don't think his kicker can get it between the end of the uh, field goal. He's going to try it here, but he said yesterday that his range, he had to be at the 30-yard line. He's got a little wind going, too. Chris Caudell will attempt what will be a 51-yard field goal. Into the wind, it comes up short. And the Hawkeyes get the wind at their back with 531 left here in the opening quarter in Iowa City. The top ranked team in the country leads 7 0. And we're about to see their second possession. The Michigan State defense will try to come up with something. Today it's college football on CBS, and tomorrow it's regional NFL action. San Francisco against Atlanta, Minnesota and the Rams. Red Hot Chicago Bears take on Tampa Bay, and they keep it going. Detroit will play the Packers, and Philadelphia against New Orleans. Here, Chuck Long, who certainly will be playing in the NFL next year, has a 7 to nothing lead on Michigan State. And again, he calls the play at the line of scrimmage. He'll throw on first down to the sideline and Helverson. Todd Crum was the defensive back, 35. How about Illinois and Ohio State? Let's go to Pat Hayden and get an update in New York. Pat? Brent, turnovers have been killing Illinois all year long. This is their 18th. Fullback Keith Jones forces the ball. Terry White is there to make the interception era. That is a funny call on second goal. It was an unusual call, Pat. This is second and two. Long brings the Hawkeyes up. Michigan State has made a substitution in the secondary. And here's Ronnie Harmon running toward the new cornerback. Rowe could not bring him down. Let's take a look at this Michigan State defense. The ringleader, of course, is Kelly Quinn. Next to him is Mark Nichols at 6'2", 228. Then it is Joe Curran, 5'11", 260. And John Jones is number 88, 6'1", 221. They'll work a lot of tricks and stunt throughout the afternoon. You can see the advantage that Iowa has here. Michigan State defense is quite quick, and they get a lot of twists and stunts in there. They're trying to get a linebacker in on Long, who throws incomplete. Bill Happel was the intended target. The crowd is booing because Happel went down, and they wanted interference. Now, the new cornerback, Ronald Rowe, is number 18 for Michigan State. Well, it was an inadvertent trip. It was not a deliberate thing. Both of them ran into one another, and so it's not a penalty. He's out of San Diego, California. He's a junior, and he's replaced Keith Fisher. Slot formation to the right. 
Tight end in motion. McAllister on the roll will put it up. It's complete to the tight end who came out in motion. That's Butch Roll, number 89. Good job. They flooded the side. It was a very safe pass. I think that if McAllister would have thrown the ball away had he not had him wide open. Roll was open. McAllister, McAllister is having a good day. Ten more yards passing for him, and already he is six of six against the win for 68 yards. And again, I go back to the fact that Michigan State has been hit with two costly penalties here in the first 12 minutes of this quarter. They trail it by seven, and here's the tailback, White, trying to get daylight. And again, Norvell, number 45, came up and knocked his legs out from under him. Well, if Norvell had not made that play, White would have been running down that sideline. Norvell's a good football player. Senior from Madison, Wisconsin. He's six foot four, 207. He's really a hard hitter. Davis is replaced by Worth at linebacker by the Hawkeyes. White's got 44 yards so far in this first quarter. He comes again. Did he get the first down, Arrow? I don't think so. I think he's short by a yard or so. Yeah. That third down here against a pretty stout defense. Looks like the Hawkeye defense is well prepared for White, but McAllister on those rollouts has them a little off balance. Kind of a new look for him. Formation distortion. Now it's a double tight end. They run away from the motion. It's White. And the Hawkeyes were there. They did not yield a first down. That is a very big defensive play. Larry Station, 36, one of the first to step up in the hole and plug it. Officials are calling timeout. I don't know whether they. It's a referee's timeout or someone called timeout down here. Oh, Iowa called it. Wants to make sure they punt it into the wind, you see. 45 seconds left to go. That was a key play. If Michigan State gets the first down, they would be able to maintain possession and they would get the wind in the next quarter and kick down wind. Now they're going to have to kick the ball into the wind. McAllister goes to the Spartan sideline. Meanwhile, being assisted off the field is number 76. Jeff Cross was shaken up on the play. Now their left tackle. Looks like it might be an ankle or a knee. Sure hope it's nothing serious. No, the Big Ten gets underway today and what a conference race it's going to be and in two weeks we will bring you the Boilermakers of Purdue led by Jim Everett against the Buckeyes of Ohio State and Keith Byers due to return by then and we will follow that with the Michigan Wolverines against the Iowa Hawkeyes Montgomery will punt into the wind not a good punt Happel, however, lets it roll inside the 35 to about the 32 and 34 seconds to go here in the first quarter on that 38 yard punt with Oklahoma in high gear, even though they lost those tailbacks to Johnson. And the two who are tied, Pat Hayden's been bringing you highlights of that action. Oklahoma State mm, for the hands full. And Michigan looking for four in a row. Chuck Long trying to quiet the crowd just a bit. The wave was beginning, and of course he's been calling so many plays at the line of scrimmage. He wants those wide receivers to hear him. He moves Helberson further outside. He's going to come in his direction underneath Rowe. And Rowe brings him down out of bounds at the 40-yard line. You know, one of the things that we might look later on in this game is a defense by Michigan State that might bait him into that out pattern and then roll up with a corner man to go for the interception. It's a coverage that they have used in the past. Clock is running down. Closing seconds in the opening quarter here. And time has run out with Iowa leading by seven. And we're going to return after this commercial break and a word from your local station. 
Great to be a cheerleader when your football team is ranked number one. I'm Brett Musburger along with Eric Parsegan. We're in Iowa City, Iowa, and the Hawkeyes lead Michigan State seven to nothing. But Eric, you have to be impressed with what the Spartans have done so far. They had an excellent quarter. They maintained possession of the ball for 11 minutes, and I know George Perlis, if you said, told him earlier that they were going to have it for 11 minutes, he'd been delighted. But they gave the big play, that 60-yard touchdown, and that really hurt them. That put them behind in the contest. Here is Ronnie Harmon. Got to the short side of the field and gets Iowa a first down. We just checked with the game officials, and the Hawkeyes were officially charged with two timeouts in the opening quarter. And I'm not so sure I would have used the second one with only 45 seconds to go, even though they wanted the win, Coach. Well, they wanted the win, but they also wanted to save as much time as they could on that 45-second clock so they would have the win when they got the ball. They were only able to get one playoff. Uh, to utilize it. Now they're going to be into the wind, although their field position is not too bad. First and ten at the 45. They run the fullback of Bush straight ahead. The key play was this one. Chuck Long, who had been throwing underneath the left corner, this time went for the home run. And they had the track star, Robert Smith, number two, flanked outside, and he busted free. And it was a 60-yard touchdown, and that is the difference so far. It is second and six for Long and the Hawkeyes. Here's Ronnie Harmon. First down and a great run. He left a few white shirts behind him, didn't he? Didn't look like the play was that well blocked. Ronnie Harmon, another great back. Left white shirts on the turf behind him. Let's take a look at it here from there. You see number 31 Harmon. There's a tackler that misses. There's three or four of them right there. They finally get him down, but that's a good job of running by Ronnie Harmon. That was Joseph Curran, 94, one of the tackles who finally came from behind. So in the first quarter, it is Long's passing, and here it looks like they may feature the running of Ronnie Harmon. Long will throw it on this underneath the Smith complete. And coming up was Crumb to knock him down, number 35. And they'll come up with a third and about two, it looks like. Brent, they're picking this. They get the corner. He's soft. They just run the out pattern. Long just rolls left. Turn out right there. They've done this. It's Bobby Smith again. They're, they're so frightened now because Smith burned them with that 60 yard that, yard that you just replayed there. Coach, we can't say enough about the Hawkeye offensive line. Perlis's famed defense is not getting the penetration. They are not putting any pressure on Long. This time he will run, and Harmon jukes and gets free. He's at the 20. The great moves of Ronnie Harmon. <laughs> Ronnie Harmon, who broke his leg in two places late last season, is just now rounding into form. And today, Hayden said, I feel he'll run like the Harmon of old, showing you a move there as he just slips that leg past the would-be tackler. Those are things you can't coach. <laughs> You're right. That's what you'd like to recruit. All the coaches in America would like to have a back like Ronnie Harmon. Ball is down to the 18-yard line of the Spartans, first and 10. Long will throw it. Tight end flag is open. And he bullies his way to a touchdown. What a second effort. Phil Parker could not bring him down. through the season. Missing on that one. He did not kick in practice this week because of a slight injury, and Hayden Fry was concerned about it. Number 86 is Mike Flagg. 
six six, two 244 pounds. Phil Parker comes in here, number 32. He can't get him down. About three or four other Michigan State Spartans get on him, but Flag carries him into the end zone. But keep in mind, he's no little fella. 6'6", 244. Flag has replaced Jonathan Hayes, who was drafted by the Kansas City Chiefs. The Hawkeyes thought this might be a problem area. But Parker, who was all Big Ten, cannot wrap him up. The Hawkeyes have a tight end. Whitney. Ninth day, they became number one. <laughs> Long is already eight for nine for 121 yards and two TDs. Not Whoa. a bad afternoon. They look tough, don't they? Oh, they really do. That drive in particular, featuring Ronnie Harmon, who's a great runner in long farm, and then Flag all of a sudden comes into the picture. I didn't realize it until, I guess, Thursday when we came out here how large that tight end is. He's a big man and strong. This is a tough period for Michigan State. George Perlis does not want to be down two touchdowns to Iowa. He must get something going right away. Houtman kicks it to the short man on the squib. And the Hawkeyes finally bring the tight end Bush roll down. Now Michigan State next week will be playing Michigan. And right now, Michigan is taking on Wisconsin. Let's go back to New York to get an update on that one. Pat? Grant, that Michigan defense continues to come up with big plays. Here it's an interception thrown by Mike Howard. The ball is late down the middle. You can't do that. Garland Rivers is there to make the play and the touchdown. Bo's got that defense planned. Let's go back to Brent Nero. Garland Rivers is one of my favorite players. You'll see him next week against Michigan State. Some folks counted out Bo Shimba for a little too early, didn't they? Now McAllister rolls. First down for the Spartans. Almost intercepted. And again, it was Norvell, 45. He's all over the place. <laughs> He's having quite an afternoon. Looked like he was going to intercept that football. That is McAllister's first incompletion. Wouldn't you know it? You get the wind at your back. <laughs> yeah, just an out pattern, but Norvell had good ball reaction while it was in the air. There you see it. Goes right through his hands. He has it momentarily, and then it slips through. Not sure McAllister read the coverage, but that second man was going to rotate in there with Sims. He thought he had him one-on-one -on -one over at this side. Now he comes back with White to the short side on the run, and Lorenzo battles his way for a gain. Well, we've got two good running backs in this one. Sure do. He stepped out of bounds there, though, after about a three- or four-yard gain. It looked like he got six or seven, almost up to eight, but the ball's marked uh, with just about a three-and-a-half-yard gain. So that'll leave them with a third and seven yard situation. But the one thing they have now is Montgomery will be kicking downwind. And when he was practicing, he was putting almost in the end zone from that spot there. Play fake. Goes for the home run. Ingram is open. He's got it inside the 10 yard line. Mark Ingram got behind the secondary. It's Ken Sims is the man that he beat. McAllister had great time. He put it up in the air and watched Ingram run on it. Sims, number nine, was two steps short. Great throw, great catch, and a big play for Michigan, something they have not been getting. McAllister is having quite a day. The freshman from Pompano Beach, Florida. With the wind at his back, he just hit the veteran wideout Mark Ingram out of Northwestern High School in Flint, Michigan, and the Spartans with an opportunity to jump right back in this one. Double tight. Here's White trying to get outside, and he cannot get free. Hap Peterson, the nose guard, penetrated. Got a hold of him, and number 50 says, you're going nowhere. Mitch Watchman, the number 62, the Michigan State Center, has got his hands full with Peterson right there. He's come free. Watch right here, the center, Watchman, trying to block Peterson. He runs right through. He even tries to get help from Morris, number 21, but doesn't do it. And he makes the play on White. He's, uh, he's given him a lot of problems in the running game. Two-yard loss. McAllister rolls to the right, being chased by Peterson. Now he gets away, incomplete, into the stands, almost in the grasp. Number 99, Richard Pryor. The 
McAllister had Butch roll open the tight end as he broke out. He did not see him soon enough, and by the time he did see him, he was covered. So he had to throw the ball away. Good judgment on it, because no one was open. What do you think Perlis will do now with McAllister? He's got to call a little timeout and talk about it. Got to call timeout. I think it's important enough to bring him over to the sideline and talk about it. So uh, McAllister and the Michigan State offense huddles around Perlis. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. There are lots of furnace coverage. One on one. Almost botched up. McAllister keeps it like he's running an option, and he'll get strung out at the 15 yard line. Well, he decided to go with an option play, something that they hadn't shown, but the, the coordination is not good. He fakes to the fullback, and McAllister and Morse, number 21, He's not in the proper position to option him. He was behind him. So he couldn't throw the ball off. The timing was off. It probably would have been a pretty good play had Morris come in front of McAllister so he could deal the ball off. Chris Caudell will attempt a 32-yard field goal. Kick is on its way, and it's good. Michigan State is on the board. And that missed extra point looms large right now because Michigan State is down by 10 rather than 11. We'll be right back. You watch the left guard here. He will pull and run into the fullback and forces McAllister deep, and the timing of that option play is off. Let's take a look. The left guard pulls. Watch the fullback collide. Forces McAllister way out of the line, and he's not able to option. Morris, number 21, is way behind as the option man. McAllister has no choice but to run it down the sideline, and they get the three points. Era, that's the danger of installing something like the option during the season. The timing, the coordination missing a little bit there. That's an excellent point. You put something in new, and you haven't worked on it. You get a situation where you had that collision. The timing was way off. Montgomery, the punter, will kick it off. Robert Smith and Ronnie Harmon are back at the goal line for the Hawkeyes. We've got 11.34 to go. The kickoff is going to be short. It'll be Harmon. 15, 20, 25, 30. Brought down finally at the 37-yard line. And it was Craig Johnson, number 28, one of the last men to have a shot at Harmon. Brought him down. Next week, more Big Ten action. It's the Wolverines of Michigan trying to stay unbeaten this afternoon. And last check with Pat Hayden, of course. They were still ahead of Wisconsin. The Badgers normally give the Wolverines a lot of trouble. You'll see them against the Spartans. Coached by George Furless, who says our program is still a couple years away, but we're on the right track. Here is Harmon. Carefully following his blockers, looking for the daylight, and Kelly Quinn, number 93, who has been relatively quiet here this afternoon. Haight is doing a good job blocking on him. Getting excellent pass protection when Long goes back to throw. Michigan State has not been able to get anywhere near him. A, week, a year ago, when Long was hurt and had a bad knee and ankle, they were able to sack him two or three times, but they haven't been anywhere near this afternoon. Second and six. Other audible. Long is back. Incomplete. That's a good job by Phil Parker coming in and making contact and knocking the ball loose. Long, first time Long had to scramble a little bit too. One of the things about Chuck Long that you have to admire, he very seldom throws the real bad pass doesn't give you that cheap interception. You've got to work hard. And that has come with experience. In that bowl game out in Anaheim, California, the inaugural Freedom Bowl, six touchdown passes. That's the most thrown by a quarterback in any bowl game in history. Third and six. Here's Harmon, big hole in the middle of that front. And finally, Timothy Moore brought him down Mark Sinliger and Tom Humphrey 
opened up that hole for the Hawkeyes. Well, a good defensive series for the Spartans, forcing a, a punt. Because that's a dangerous offensive team with Long and Harmon in that group. Kostrabala, left-footed punter. Not a real good punt. Downed inside the 40 at about the 37-yard line. So 9.58 left. 21-yard punt. And Hayden is speaking for the young man. Yeah, Hayden was... Fry's staff spent much of the summer studying how to attack Perlis's stunting, looping defense. And the way they're blocking it here today, you would have to say that they've been successful in those hours spent watching reels of film. They were really concerned about it, but you, from the evidence we've seen thus far, they've done a good job. First and ten. Let's see if McAllister can rally the Spartans again. Play fake. He's got time. Home run. Wants rising incomplete. He just overthrew him at the 10 yard line. Ken Sims was on the coverage. I guess they liked what they had seen in the previous drive when he hit Ingram. They're going to try it again. He had him open. Rising was past the defender, but uh, he just overthrew him just a tad. Devon Mitchell, number 21 there, one of the outstanding free safeties. The walk on here turned out to be a great football player. She looked at these. Second and ten. McAllister will roll to the left. Steps up, hits his own lineman, and there's a penalty flag down. John Breeze brought him down. This could be defensive holding. That's exactly yeah. what it is. Good. Butch Roll was trying to get free the Spartan tight end era. Good call. So the penalty goes against the Hawkeyes and the Spartans get a break. They trail 13 3 9 44 left here in the first half. The Hawkeyes have scored two touchdowns here this afternoon and missed an extra point. And at halftime, of course, Jim Nance and Pat Hayden will have all the information and highlights for you on the Prudential College Football Report. Big, big night for Eddie Robinson. Going for the victory. That would break Bear Bryant's record. And Jim will be talking to him live from Dallas at halftime. First and ten. McAllister coming to the right. Big Jeff Dross got him out of the pocket. Throws back complete. Bryson, he's got an alley in speed. Across the 30, the 25, the 20, the 15, the 10. Down to the end zone. Touchdown, Michigan State. A 50-yard touchdown by Michigan State. Off a roll to the right, McAllister throws back to the left, and the Hawkeyes have to know now they are in for a ball game here this afternoon. A quarterback has been discovered in Kinnick Stadium. I said he may blossom today, and I guess he has. Certainly has in the first half here. He avoided the rush, scrambled, and threw the ball to the open receiver. Cadell to attempt the extra point. It's good. The top-ranked Hawkeyes are in for a dogfight. I think McAllister is seeing the field much better. Same bootleg pass. White going one way. McAllister coming the other. And he finds Ryzen right over the middle. Now watch Ryzen does a great job of running against the grain of the defenders. He breaks to the left sideline, picks up a block. He's got excellent speed. And it's a 50-yard touchdown run as he comes down that left sideline before the Hawkeyes can get to him. Number 21, Mitchell almost. There is Shane Bulla, and it was a big week for his father. 
He was named the new head coach, the Buffalo Bills, and we asked him what he thinks about his dad's promotion. I was really thrilled, thrilled and surprised. I didn't, uh, I didn't expect it. I don't think my family expected it right uh, this early in the season, but uh, we're very excited. We wish Hank Buller nothing but the best up there in Buffalo. It is not going to be easy, but if anyone can turn them around, certainly defensively, it'll be Hank Buller. Here, his son is trying to rally the Spartans defensively against Chuck Long. Ronnie Harmon on the screen got to the 45-yard line. He's still short of a first down by about three yards. Third down coming up, and again it was Anthony Bell over there. George Perlis was talking about Anthony Bell yesterday, and he said he's one of his better football players. Even when he goes to the nickel and dime defense with secondary people, he keeps Bell in there because he's fast enough to run with receivers. Another one of those good football players out of the state of Florida. He played high school ball down in Fort Lauderdale. Number 51. He steps up to meet the tight end at the left side of the Michigan State defense. Long throws to the far side incomplete. Over through Helverson. Southwest Conference. A week ago we had Texas holding off Stanford. And a lot of folks say the Razorbacks are the team to watch in the chase for the Cotton Bowl berth. Well, they're having quite an afternoon here. Of course, TCU with Wackers had their problems when he suspended all those players. But Arkansas is a fine football team. Well, let's see what Kostrabala does this time, Punny. Morris will let it go on into the end zone for the touchback. 625, and Michigan State again will have the wind at its back. They trail the top rank Iowa Hawkeyes by three points, and we'll be right back. Great size, he studies that Iowa defense. Now he's calling audibles. Here's White. Banging for a couple of yards. You can just feel McAllister's confidence growing here this afternoon. The way he comes to the line of scrimmage, the way he looks out at that defense, Checks over to the sideline, reads his play. Then he came up and he called an audible. Georgia told us last night that one of the problems when you deal with a freshman quarterback is he's not completely familiar yet with his system and can't check off as well as a veteran like Dave Urema would. He had made a couple of calls in the ball games that did not allow him for the proper protection. And he got sacked a couple of times. And of course, it looks like he's making the right calls now. He rolls to the right. Complete again. This one to Ingram. He's Ken really, Sims makes the tackle. He's really on target, isn't he? I mean, just an out pattern. He's just throwing the ball with great confidence. George Perlis has got to be pleased with that. And the Hawkeyes are in a ball game. He's now 9 for 12, 179 yards. As a matter of fact, coming into this ball game, Brent, some of that yardage that we saw on the screen was uh, Dave Uremas. And now... Uh, McAllister came into this ball game with total in two ball games of 99 yards, averaging about not just under 50 yards a game. Now, of course, you can even have him throw on first down. He's been so good, and here he is. Going long, but he has overthrown his receiver. Nate Creer had a shot to intercept. And it went out of bounds. Ingram was the receiver on the far sideline. Good coverage that time. I think that he probably... I don't know, he may have tried to overshoot that just to throw it away I, because uh, there were no receivers open there. Coverage was excellent. That is a strong, strong arm he possesses. Got a great arm. Five fourteen to go here in the first half. Iowa leading Michigan State. This is the 90th anniversary. Uh, football on the Big Ten. Whoops. That time they busted the snap count. Tony Manderic, the left tackle, just a freshman from Oakville, Ontario. 6'6, 269. Wanted to get to him a little soon. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. So with the Big Ten underway, the Illini and Ohio State tied. They're in the third quarter in Champaign. Michigan running it up 30 to 6. Uh-oh. 
How'd that happen? <laughs> and next week, we've got the Michigan Wolverines who figure to be 4-0 up against these Michigan State Spartans who are developing here this afternoon into a fine football team. Of course, they've already handled Arizona State at home. We shouldn't overlook that victory. Arizona State better than anybody Iowa has beaten. McAllister back. Left side, he's got Ingram complete again. And Creer takes him out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. It'll be short of a first down. Now the Buckeyes have just scored their third touchdown. And again, they are without Keith Byers. Broke his foot before the season even started. And they hope to have him back in a couple of weeks when the Buckeyes take on Purdue here on CBS. Third and three. Here is White, and he is short of a first down. Jeff Frost, number 76. He's at the bottom of that pile. This is about the third time that Iowa has stopped the Spartans on short yardage situations. Jeff Frost, number 36, along with Norvell coming in there, number 45. 37 is George Davis. They really, really played good defense on that short yardage situation. Now Montgomery set to punt. Smith and Happel are deep for the Hawks. Happel at the 18 at the 20 yard line. Brought down right there by Shane Bulla, number 41, as George Perlis told us, my regulars will be on those specialty teams. Bullard just showed you why. How about our quarterback comparison? We've got one who's a Heisman Trophy candidate and the other who's an emerging freshman here. Well, the thing that's interesting about this is that Long was number one in the conference in most all the statistics. Bobby McAllister, I shouldn't say Bobby McAllister, but Michigan State was dead last in scoring offense, pass offense, and total offense. You know, how do you figure this game? Long to throw on first down. Good protection over the middle. Complete to Helberson. Helberson out to the 37 yard line. A 16 yard gain by the Hawkeyes. And here's Chuck Long again, executing beautifully. He had beautiful time, just fakes a sweep to the left. He waits, he waits, he waits. Finally, Halverson over the middle, wide open between the seams of the linebackers in a zone. And beautiful job of protection. When you give Long that kind of time, he's going to complete passes. I mean, all the way down the field. He cannot get that kind of time. 65, Tom Humphrey. Watch his guard. Look at his feet, how he positions them, balances, holds them off, and now they run Harmon. And he is checked out of bounds. Kelly Quinn, 93, was over there. He ran a long ways to get at him that time, showing you his speed. Might see a screen or a draw in here with three and a half minutes, less than three and a half minutes to go. They need 15 yards. They're a good screening team. Audible. Short drop and a pop to Happel. Caught it out of bounds at the 38-yard line, but this will still leave Iowa with about a third and nine. Well, they read the coverages and he took the out pattern, but I don't think it was an, it was they picked up six yards on the play, but they still have third and nine now. There are the one man who has been open for Iowa here this afternoon whenever they want him is that tight end flag. He scored their touchdown when he held off about three would-be tacklers. They seem to be able to get him in the middle of this Michigan State defense to find a seam if they can. Long is straight back. And this time he will not get it off. He is sacked for the first time here this afternoon. John Jones got in and broke the tackle for the first time 
the offensive protection did not hold up. Long went back, and one of the reasons was the secondary had covered flag. He was ready to go to him. He had to hold up, and that gave Jones just enough time to beat the block and get in on the tackle. Costrabala hits this one better than he's connected with any punt here this afternoon. Gets an Iowa roll. And it'll be out of bounds at the 19-yard line. 227 for McAllister. A 51-yard punt. And at halftime, of course, Jim Nance and Pat Hayden, and they'll be talking with Eddie Robinson, the great coach out of Grambling. He goes for the record tonight down in Texas. Who's that against? Prairie View A&M? That's who it is. Well, he's had a marvelous career down at Grambling. Terrific. And there is Dennison leading DePaul at the half, 14-7. Folks, to the best of my knowledge, that's the last of the big schools using the single wing. I'm sure that there are some Division Three teams using it. But Dennison scored 63 points last week. Now they lead here again this afternoon. Right on the draw. Daylight runs into his own man. Ricochets like a pinball in the other direction and gets out to the 45. Just a quick little draw to the inside, and when he finds daylight, he made 26 yards on that play. He was blocked well at the hole, but when he gets into that secondary, he wiggles all over the place. How'd you like to catch him? Look at the hole in there, beautifully blocked. When he pops through there, he's got all kinds of moves. You see the Hawkeyes trying to chase him down. He just runs all over the field. They took advantage of that Hawkeye pursuit, started a little misdirection and opened it up, and White did the rest, and now it's first and ten. McAllister, short drop, quick pop to Ingram, who drops it. White has 18 carries and 75 yards. Last year, in the same field, White carried the ball 27 times and only made 54 yards against this football team. So he's way above that already. Watch now and see if the ball isn't tipped in this sequence. Jeff Drost does indeed get a hand on it. That's why they like those tackles about 6'4", 6'5", get the hand. The blitz is coming. They step around it. It's White. And he's got a first down inside of the two-minute mark here in the first half. Caught the linebacker blitz perfect that time. Right side linebacker, I believe it was Station, started the blitz. He was blocked to the outside, and that's exactly where White hit. Watch right here. Number 36 station comes right through. He's blocked to the outside. White pops right through that hole. Beautiful blocking, beautiful call. And again, White running the ball. Just an outstanding back. McAllister with the Spartans at the line of scrimmage. Ball is at the 43. Rolls to the right. And he's brought down that time. And again, it was big Jeff Ross, number 76. What a game he's having here this afternoon. Peterson's been a little quiet the last few series. He had a great first quarter, early part of the second quarter. Now Dross has stepped in and doing a great job. Second and 14. Rising goes up to the left. Ingram is down to McAllister's right or the short side. Short drop complete to Rising. Station misses him, but he's surrounded and he will go nowhere. I thought Nate Creer played that very well. He really did. As a matter of fact, the whole Hawkeyes closed down on Ingram. I mean, Rising. And he is really a dangerous runner, as we've seen earlier. But the Hawkeyes, you could just see from up here, everybody just closing down with great pursuit. We've got a timeout here. And you're watching Big Ten football. Ten schools, and they pursue excellence in all fields. Back in Iowa City, I'm Brent Musburger, along with Eric Parsegan. The number one ranked Iowa Hawkeyes in a dogfight as the Big Ten Conference gets underway. And Michigan State has found a freshman quarterback. Bobby McAllister, number eight. Eyes that defense, third and 11. Swing. Here's White. 
gets to the 40. And Hap Peterson, number 50, coming from behind. Brought him down. He got to the 39-yard line. I don't think there's any need to kick it. There's 23 seconds left to go. I'd use the fourth down situation, try to get into field goal position with an out pattern of some sort. 17 seconds. I wouldn't be afraid to surrender the ball at that field position with that time. They're letting the clock run down. Six, five, four, three, two. It has run down to one second, but one of the officials is signaling that McAllister did call a timeout with one second. Now, if he sets up a field goal with one second to go, of course, then he can kill the clock right here. But I'll tell you, that's waiting too long. I really do. I think he should have saved about nine or ten seconds on the clock to give a play and uh, an opportunity to kick a field goal if they happen to make have a pass completion. Era, the, the staff over there, in fairness to that coaching staff, they were trying to get McAllister to call timeout at about the 10-second mark. He had his back to him, and he didn't realize it, and they were yelling at him as he ran away from the bench. So they will spot the ball down on the 46-yard line, so it'll be a 56-yard attempt by Cardell. Chris Cardell, who has already connected on one field goal here from 32 yards and missed from 51 yards, will try his third field goal of the game. Well, he's got a chance there with uh, a little wind helping. Snap. The kick is up. And it's no good. The end of the first half, but better than you expected, right? The Spartans are hanging tough here in Iowa City. It's 13-10. We got one cooking. I'm 32 years old, and I love... Hayden Fry and his assistant coaches going over the final preparations here for the second half. And so frequently, it's the adjustments that a coaching staff will make that spells the difference between winning or losing. And when he's ahead of you, he usually doesn't ease up. But in no way is he relaxing about what George Perlis and the Spartans are accomplishing here this afternoon. Iowa will kick it off, and Michigan State will work against the wind. They deferred, and it means that the Spartans will have the win at their back for the final 15 minutes. It could be a very key factor. Outland is putting the ball on the tee for the Hawkeyes. Johnson back deep to return it here for the Spartans. More like a November afternoon than one in October in Iowa City. Gray sky here in the Midwest. To the short man. Picked up by Altabella. And he gets it back to the 28 yard line. How the quarterbacks made out in the first half. Bobby McAllister, the big story. And the two big running backs. Lorenzo White is out rushing Ronnie Harmon of Iowa. And the linebackers. Now McAllister back to work again, and here is White. White running behind the right side of that Michigan State offense, and again, Hap Peterson, number 50, so active, getting out there to help out. Early, Air Force, of course, has had the jinx on Jerry Faust since he took over as the head coach. Well, they've won three in a row. Second down and six. Motion by the tight end. White will run behind him. White trying to turn the corner. Gets past Sims, and he's finally ridden out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Larry Station, number 36, the linebacker, brought him down. The honors student here at Iowa makes the all-academic team regularly in the Big Ten. Calls the defensive signals. He has ever since he was a freshman. 
came from Omaha. He's won the Cornhuskers. Let get away. Now he's matched against the Spartan attack. Caden Fry says he's really a well-disciplined individual. Has his priorities all straight. It is White coming back for the first down. Beautiful job. Peterson veered to the field that time. The center watchman, which did a good job on one of the previous uh, draws in the first half, did exactly the same thing that time. Peterson ran himself out of it. White cut against the grain. A beautiful, well-blocked play. Watch here. Peterson, number 50. Watchman blocks him clear to the right. Number 62 there. You see White hide right behind that and then pick the daylight on the draw. That's 101 yards rushing for White. That's his sixth straight 100-yard game. And, of course, that is a Michigan State record. That breaks Eric Allen's former mark, and here he comes again, adding more yards to that total, getting close to the 45-yard line, and again it was Station who had to come over and get him out of bounds. Coming into the ball game, uh, Michigan State was averaging 158 yards rushing, and Lorenzo was getting 140 some of that himself. 146, as a matter of fact. again by the tight end. McAllister on the roll to the right. Peterson chasing after him. Now Station is there. And he throws it complete. Butch roll. The tight end gets across midfield to the 49-yard line. Norvell bringing him down. And there is a penalty flag down. May have been a face mask. Yep. Good call. Good call, man. The coverage was much better that time uh, by the uh, Hawkeyes. They had the receivers pretty well covered and forced McAllister all the way to the sideline, but he still hit it. So the Spartans mounting a drive here early in the second half. Face mask, under defense, penalized any of the run, first down. You know, Brent, this is a game where, you know, you think this is, this is not going against what you anticipated, but it isn't that the Hawkeyes are playing poorly. It's that Michigan State is playing an outstanding football game. They've got a dimension to their offense now that they didn't have before. Using the tight end in motion. Blocking straight up. Running white. Gets to the corner before he's banged out of bounds by Norvell. So we want to congratulate the Toronto Blue Jays who have won the American League's Eastern Division 5-1 over the New York Yankees. But I imagine there were more than just a few nervous stomachs in the city of Toronto after what occurred last night. With the Jays allowing the Yankees to come from behind with two out in the ninth inning. But now it's over. And the Jays will go on to play either Kansas City or California for the American League Championship. Again, the tight end in motion. And they run White behind the motion man. Steps out of bounds. That's going to leave them about third and four. Devon Mitchell, 21, sealed it up that time. Trying to get to the corner to the perimeter of the defense. That time Iowa supported well, although the linemen were blocked. They got a good game plan. Michigan State has come in here with an excellent game plan. Darrell will see if they run White on one of those counter moves. Draw play here. They've also used McAllister on a roll very effectively. Comes to the left. Throws to the tight end. Trying to get the first down. Norvell had him wrapped up, and he got him out of bounds short of it. It's going to be an interesting call for George Perlis. He's looking at fourth down and about two from the 30. Well, I guess it's less than where he, to where he marks it. That's one. He's going for it. He's going for it. But keep in mind, in the first half, three times Hawkeye well, stopped it. Right now. Played a great game in that one, too. Illinois tying it up again there in the fourth quarter. 
Long with a deep drop. Over the middle. Complete for the first down to Mike Flagg. While we were mentioning Ohio State and Illinois, era, there's somebody back in Columbus, Ohio, in the hospital. But we certainly want to send along our best wishes. Certainly do. I know he's been hospitalized there for a while, and I worked for him clear back in 1950. He gave me my start in coaching when he hired me as the freshman coach at Miami. Woody suffering a heart attack, and Woody, we wish you nothing but the best. We hear you're coming along fine. Expect to see you in a couple of weeks. Here comes Ronnie Harmon now, trying to get the corner turn. Penalty marker has been thrown. Curran helped bring him down. This may be a holding call. Mm. The Hawkeyes looked dominant in the first quarter, but since then, George Perlis and the Spartans have taken it away from them. Well, he was telling us, he says, you don't have to worry about my team hitting, and certainly they've done that, and they've brought the defense that was so successful for him at Pittsburgh with a lot of stunts on the inside, as you mentioned earlier, and the running game has been, they've forced an inconsistency on the part of the Hawkeye running game. Long is without question their strong suit. The numbers that help tell you the story, the most important, of course, are up there on that scoreboard, 17-13, Michigan State with the lead, 11-18 to go, and era, how did George describe this team as a 1950s bunch? 1950s, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know exactly what that means. Well, that means no face masks, <laughs> leather helmets. You know, guys say, yeah. come on, let's play. Guys going both ways. Huh? <laughs> Here's first down. Long now moving his pocket to the right. Plenty of time back over the middle to Happer. They'll have about three and a half yards to go for the first down. Don't you like those guys like Happel, number 40? They come into the conference and people say he's too slow, he's too small, they can't do anything. Watch him make a cut. All he does is get open and watch these hands. And, and look exactly where Long puts it, too. I tell you, he's dangerous. That's the strong suit of the Hawkeyes. I think they're going to have to, they're going to beat this Michigan State team. They're going to have to do it, throwing the ball with Long. Well, they're number one. Let's prove it right here this afternoon. 10.26 to go in the third. Here comes the big back, Harmon. The Spartans bringing him out to the sideline. He still squeezes out a first down. The mark of a great one. Bill Parker, 32, up to Bammy. Ah, the Big Ten Conference, where the big crowds are in college football. Next week, we'll see these Spartans. Oh, if they upset Iowa here this afternoon, and Michigan comes in unbeaten. You think we won't have an afternoon? Yeah. I may have to leave the Dodgers and the Cardinals early. <laughs> All right. Yeah. First and ten. Ball on the 49-yard line. The fullback Bush straight ahead. They only use him to keep a defense honest. He's primarily a blocker. Timothy Moore, 42, the linebacker, coming up to swat him down. Now it's second and eight. 9.54. The crowd is quiet. They expected more from the Hawkeyes here this afternoon. Split backs this time. What a blitz on. He still gets it off the Happel intercepted. He overthrew him. And Parker. But the ball is marked where his knee is down, just inside the 30-yard line. Long's first interception and a big turnover. And the receiver was open as you watch here. Long just overshoots him. This is the first blitz that they put on that they're really getting near him right there. There's the throw. He just overthrows him right there. The defender covering was behind him. And, of course, Parker picks the ball off as a free safety. Just wait for it. Now, remember, Parker was burned earlier in this game when Flagg broke his tackle and battled into the end zone. This time, Parker prevails with the interception. Now it's McAllister again. Here's the tight end in motion. Curlis's formation. Now it's White the tailback to the corner. And he is out of bounds. It'll be marked at about the 34-yard line. Butch Roll, the tight end, the man in motion, an era that formation is working so well. 
They're coming up to the line of scrimmage. They're reading the coverage. They're going to the weak spot or the soft spot of the defense. And Iowa's having trouble because of White's great speed. He gets to the corner, gets leverage to the weak side of the formation. Aiden Fry going over things with his quarterback, Chuck Long. You told me before this game that you liked White a lot. I really did. He's 27 for 137 yards already. And one touchdown. Here's his 28th carry. Look at that run. Penalty marker is down. White is written out of bounds at the 45. Nate Freer, 29, took him out. May have been the split end who was downfield, rising, helping to block on that play, era. Now watch at the bottom of your screen right here. You see Risen's right arm. <laughs> that wasn't holding, folks. That was tackling. Boy, a good call by the officials and a real nice picture. So the fans can see why that call was made. Speaking of good pictures, our director down in the truck. Joe Assetti, and we certainly want to send along our best wishes to his mother, who has been watching faithfully every week. And Helen Assetti, we want you to know that Big Joe does a great job. I know you haven't been feeling well the last few weeks, but we're all thinking about you here and now. Second down and four. White cuts back again against that green and squeezes out close to another first down. He may have it depending on where they spot the ball. Let's take a look at the white right guard Wojciechowski here blocks down to the inside Peterson they're really doubling on Peterson the thing that white is doing I think is doing an outstanding job of is he allows the defenders to go ahead and run to the field and cuts back against it that was Larry station the big linebacker who finally stepped in there and here's the measurement he's got it Barely. 9-12. Third period. You can just tell by how the two benches are reacting. Who's ahead in this game right now? Sure can. Momentum shifted in the game and certainly is on the side of the Spartans here. Iowa needs a play. They need a big defensive play. First and ten. The ball is at the 40. Here's the young man who's authored this upset so far. Bobby McAllister out of the state of Florida. The red shirt freshman. He's got his tight end in motion. They'll run in that direction. And White's got another big hole. And the tight end did it again. Inside the 40 with Vino Belk, number 95, just blowing that corner open with that block. And they cannot solve that formation. You see the tight end lead blocks and White has such great speed, he gets out of the contain here, turns into where the daylight is. You see Devon Mitchell trying to get there, the free safety, and he can't. And Sims finally brings him down, number nine, to save it from going for a score. 174 yards, Lorenzo White has rushed for here this afternoon. Looking for daylight, comes back into the heart of the defense. May have still gained a couple of yards. Jeff Drouse still there. I had seen some highlight film on him earlier, and I really liked White the way he ran. He, he's got great peripheral vision. He's able to read the defenders and always cuts to some kind of a daylight. And certainly we've seen him do it here this afternoon. He's a great running back. Second and eight for McAllister. Ingram is split to the left. He'll roll in that direction. He's got him inside the 25. Ingram is loose. Does not score as Nate Greer, with one hand on his jersey, kept him from getting into the end zone. But it was a 36-yard gain, and the Spartans are knocking on the door again. Blitzing the linebacker, there's no under, underneath coverage, and he's wide open. McAllister turns, he's got one-on-one, -on -one, no one in between to shelter it. Ingram catches the ball, and you see 29, Nate Greer trying to chase him down, finally pulls him down by the shirt, but there was no help on the inside. What so a great job by this offensive line. Man Derrick and Rogers and Watchman and Wojciechowski giving the young man time drills his receiver. Here's first and goal. McAllister trying to follow his center and he is stacked up. 
the heart of that defense, of course, would be number 50, Hap Peterson. Goal line with the tackles pinching in down there and coming underneath. Now it'll be second and goal. It looked as though only the center knew the snap count that time, and he tried to lead the way for the quarterback. Trying to sneak it in, try to get it in the easiest way, but Iowa was in there stacked and stopped the play. Wide side of the field would be to McAllister's right. And now he puts his wing back on that side. Here is White coming to the short side. Touchdown. And George Perlis and the Spartans are authoring an upset. White has carried 32 times arrow for 177 yards. And this, and this is against a team that has led the Big Ten Conference in total defense three of the last four years, was leading the nation in rushing defense. This is just a pitch, but look at the hole. I think you and I could have gone through that one. Lorenzo found it easier than we would have, though. Cardell attempting the extra point. Bad snap, but they got it down in time, and it's good. Michigan State taking the lead and we go one more time can the Hawkeyes solve Lorenzo White they have not here so far and now the heat is on we are back live Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City Iowa and Michigan State with a chance of upsetting the number one ranked team in the nation Lorenzo White has done a job against Hayden Fry's defense here this afternoon. Montgomery takes it in Ronnie Harmon's direction, and Harmon alertly let the ball go out of bounds at the one yard line. A year ago, I mentioned that Ohio State, Illinois, turned in a tremendous performance. And I think it featured one of the best plays of the year in college football. And that was the great comeback by the Buckeyes in that game. Illinois, of course, opening up. Big lead. And then do you remember this moment? Here he came, Keith Byers, number 41. Watch him lose a shoe. Won't slow him down. He doesn't miss a beat. And he zips into the end zone. And the Buckeyes came back. That was the final score. This afternoon in Champaign. Upset. What a happy night in the Mike White household tonight as his son kicks a field goal to give the Illini that victory over the Buckeyes of Ohio State. So the Big Ten gets underway, and we could have a couple of upsets. Flag picking up that short kickoff, and he is swarmed on by the Spartans. I mean, they came battering after him. We've got six minutes and 53 seconds to go here in the third quarter. And the Spartans of Michigan State lead Iowa 24 to 13. I'm Brett Musburger, along with Eric Parsegan. And it has been two men who have done the job here this afternoon for Michigan State. Their quarterback, number eight, Bobby McAllister. And their great running back, number 34, Lorenzo White. McAllister has thrown for 245 yards. And now the pressure is squarely on Chuck Long and the Hawkeyes. If they're number one, they'll prove it now. Plenty of time. He's got all day waiting. Now the defense comes free. This game started with the Hawkeyes exploding the big play. 60-yard touchdown pass from Long to Smith. They led by seven. Quickly it became 13 when he hit his tight end, but they missed the extra point, and that was the omen to be. The Spartans came bouncing back. They kicked the field goal. It was 13-3. Then it was a 50-yard touchdown pass from the freshman to Ryzen. And then Michigan State went ahead as Lorenzo White stepped into the end zone. And a second time, pushed the lead to 11 points. And now Long on second and 10, pulls out over the middle to Harmon, incomplete. 
Timothy Moore, a linebacker, got back with him beautifully. Beautiful job by Tim Moore. I can't believe that he got back there. Linebacker. He steps in and knocks the ball down just before it gets there. He'll come into the picture right. Looks, it looks like it's going to be a reception. He dives and knocks the ball down and knocks it away for an incompletion. Arrow, what do you see with this Iowa offense? They seem somewhat passive here. Well, what happened? They, their running game has been sort of blunted. They've got to go to the air to, to play catch up. There's plenty of time, 21 minutes to go, and long is dangerous. He's got half full open. First down at the 39 yard line. Todd Crum, as you said, dangerous. Uh, you bet. The young man, Happel, who his father, back in the 50s, was a running back here for the Hawkeyes, out of Cedar Rapids, showing you again why he gets so wide open, putting a move and getting to the outside on Crum for the first down. First and 10. Long to put it up again. They'll set the screen, and here's Harmon. Daylight comes to the outside at the 20, the 15, inside the 10, and finally Parker gets him out of bounds near the five-yard line, and the Hawkeyes now are storming back, a 37-yard game. Perfect time for the screen. Michigan trying to rush the passer. Long looks away. Tries to look downfield, then dumps the ball off to Harmon here on the screen. He gets beautiful blocking downfield, turns to the sideline. A great call by Iowa. Ronnie Harmon, who is backed up by his younger brother, Kevin Harmon. And of course, Ronnie Harmon is trying to come back and be as impressive as Lorenzo White has been here today from the eye. Harmon's the eye back. Comes out as a blocker. The pass to Smith. Touchdown, Iowa. Decision time for the Hawkeyes. Do they go for two? They have already missed one extra point. And their specialist has a tender leg. Aiden Fry must make a decision against George Perlis and Michigan State. Perlis is watching to see. There's no question that he's going to go for two in this sequence. They've already used one timeout. There, he finally got it. Finally got the timeout. He could not communicate, apparently, with his team on the field. He wanted to get the right defense in. He finally got the call because he's got to get the two points. Just a quick out by Smith here. Watch him in the flanker position. Beats a defender to the corner. Long has plenty of time, and he puts it away from the defenders and right in Smith's hands. Bangle, they can strike quick. Two plays, and they're in there. Now watch Harmon and Bush. They get ahead to protect Long as he rolls in that direction. And that is Smith's second touchdown reception of the day. And he simply outran both Miller and Crum to get open going to the corner of the end zone. Now, that is the second timeout that Perlis has used here in the second half. They are down to one, but they had to get the regular defensive unit back on the field because Hayden Fry was showing two points. And that could be very costly. There's still six minutes and 16 seconds left to go in the third period. And it looks like it's going to shape up as a tight ball game. It has been a dandy so far. And those timeouts are so important. We used to try to conserve all of our timeouts because those clock-stopping opportunities can influence the outcome of a game. Now Michigan State is reduced to just one. Fake to Harmon. Under pressure. Throws it. He's got it in the end zone. Two points. Great throw under pressure. Watch the pressure that Long gets here. He still drops the ball in there. The receiver was covered. He hesitates. Then he puts it right there. Flag 
makes a great catch with a two-point play. Outstanding work. Johnny now, Miller, number two. Pull back to the three. Johnny Miller is trying to cover him, number 44. Excuse me, Brent. But this is such a great play by Long. That's perfect. If it was a little shorter, a little longer, he never gets it. Watch his feet as Flag reached up, looked down to make sure that he was not out of the end zone. He's already scored a touchdown. Now he catches the two-point conversion. How about that excitement in Champaign? Let's go to New York for an update. Field goal by Chris White. It was 38 yards with four seconds remaining. It lifted them to a 31 to 28 win. The race is on. Let's go back to Brent Nara. And back here, Pat, 6.16 to go in the third. And it appears as though Hayden Fry will make a big change on his kickoff team. Marv Cook has teed the ball up. So that injury to Houtland has taken him off the field and Cook kicks it to a short man at the 14. Altabelli trying to find an alley. He does. He is out to the 34. And speaking of Altabelli, he is one of our Toyota Leadership Award winners today. We present that weekly to a team member who's been singled out by his athletic department for his team contributions, grades, and citizenship. So it goes to Dean Altabelli for Michigan State and Iowa's outstanding linebacker, Larry Station. And now Station must do a job as Toyota has donated $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. First and 10 for the Spartans. Tight end in motion the entire left side of the line jumped across that time. Crowd noise could have influenced them. There's a lot of noise in here now. Michigan State penalized today six times for 35 yards, twice in the first half, costly penalties when they appeared to be on the move. How do you figure that difference? Well, that really is a surprise. You just, you know, coming into this ball game, no one, you would think it would be the other way at this point. Iowa with 425 yards. But the Michigan State offense has come to life. First and 15. Callister rolling to the right. Throws on the run incomplete. He wanted Ingram. Era, because of McAllister's performance, I'm sure that the coaching staff has completely altered its game plan here this afternoon. Well, the McAllister is just reeking with confidence now. He knows that he can do it. The staff has confidence in him. They're not afraid to go ahead and throw the ball where they are here on the field. He has been able to do it. And look at the numbers right there. They tell a story. Second and 15. And looking ahead, if I might, for a moment next week, you'd have to think that McAllister will lead these Spartans against Michigan, regardless of Dave Urema's condition. McAllister to run back the other way. And he's cut down. Richard Pryor, number 99, chasing him. Now watch along the line with the Hawkeyes starting to play with some emotion. It is Pryor who comes busting in behind McAllister. They cut him off on his escape. And from behind, it was Pryor who tackled him right there. He was injured earlier in the week with a bad ankle, but he seems to be moving around quite well now. Third down and 18. Now, because of the crowd sound, McAllister can't hear, so he wisely steps away from it. He pump fakes it. He sees it. He's open. Look at the lineman. 
them coming in on him. They've all been let free because of the screen. He avoids them, throws the ball over to Harmon, who has broken away from his defender, and they finally run him out of bounds. That could have been a 15, 20-yard negative play. But Harmon and Long did a super job. Third and five. They run Harmon. Great play call. Shane Bullet tripped him up, but not before Harmon got the Hawkeyes the first down. Watch Harmon. Michigan State expecting Long to put the ball back in the air, and Bullet just getting a hand over in time, tripping him up, or he might have zipped into the end zone. 340 in the third. Iowa down by a field goal. Here's first down. Hudson is now the fullback. Number 20, David Hudson. Long rolling to the left. His receivers covered on that side. He'll throw back for a touchdown to flag. And the Long family is overjoyed as their son has done it again. 